Okay, let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. And if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are preparing for the CLEP College Algebra exam, which is awesome as the CLEP uh, program is really something special. As a matter of fact, all students should try to take advantage of CLEP exams. And if you don't know what a CLEP exam is, which I assume you do because you're looking at this video, basically, if you pass these tests, you're going to get full credit for your college for this particular course. So that's going to save you a ton of money and time. So if you think you have the math skills to uh, pass CLEP College Algebra, you should definitely go for it. But uh, here we have a problem. I got a CLEP College Algebra practice problem that you should be able to do if you are fully prepared for the CLEP College Algebra exam. I'm going to get into the, uh, this particular problem here in a second, but it's i to the 30th power is equal to what? And we want to solve this without using a calculator. Of course, I'm going to get into the exact solution to this problem. If you want to go ahead and pause the video and try it and put your answer into the comment section, that's awesome as well. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And over those years, I've constructed my math help program, which consists of over 100 plus different math courses, many of which are specialty test prep courses. I actually have an outstanding CLEP College Algebra test prep course. I'm going to leave the link to it in the description of this video. It's been very, very successful. So if you need help with preparing uh, for the CLEP College Algebra exam, check out my um, test prep course. It will really, really help you out. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this problem here. And I to the 30th power, well, what's the topic? What are we dealing with here? Well, we're dealing with complex and imaginary numbers, which is certainly something that you will learn at the college algebra level. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. Again, if you don't want to see the answer, go ahead and pause the video and work on it, and you can put your final answer into the comment section. But let's go ahead and take a look, take a look at the solution to the problem right now. All right, so we're going to solve this without a calculator. Now, again, if you had your calculator, you can certainly just go into your calculator and go I if you know how if you have a scientific or really kind of a more a graphing calculator, more advanced calculator. They put the caret key and you could put in 30. And most advanced calculators will give you the right answer. But again, we're not going to use our calculator. We're going to use our brains and math skills to figure this out. All right, so here is the answer, though. I to the 30th power is equal to negative 1. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got that right, that's pretty good. Okay, I mean, that definitely shows that you have some uh, pretty solid understanding of not only imaginary numbers or complex numbers, but also how to manipulate expressions like this using uh, properties of powers and exponents because that's really the way we're going to do this problem. I mean, you're not going to take i and multiply it by itself 30 times. That would be too painful and too long. You're certainly not going to have the time for that on your uh, college algebra exam. But let's go ahead and take a look at a nice, easy way to do this problem. Okay, so I did the 30th power. So let me just kind of show you the work right here. And let's first start off by reviewing what i is equal to. Okay, so i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so hopefully you, uh, you remember that. This is our imaginary number, i, by definition. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so if i is equal to the square root of negative 1, i squared is equal to negative 1. All right, just imagine here, if I take this i and I square it, okay, if I square this right here, that radical... Uh, that square root symbol uh, falls away, and I'm just left with negative 1. So i squared is equal to, uh, let me just go ahead and kind of erase this here so we don't confuse anyone. i squared is equal to uh, negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what i to the third power is. Now, what we're trying to do here is just to kind of get some basic um, answers to i, and you'll see why this is going to come in handy here in a second. So i to the third power is the same thing as i squared times i, or i to the first. So remember, anytime you're multiplying powers with the same base, for example, if I have x to the second power times x to the third power, how we're going to um, add this is multiplication. The bases are the same. What we need to do is add the exponents. That would be 2 plus 3, or x to the fifth power, right? So here, 
i cubed is the same thing as i to the second power times i to the first, because this would be i to the what, two plus one or third. But we know what i squared is. i squared is negative one, and we know what i to the first is, or i, that's the square root of negative one. So i squared, of course, is negative one times i, which is by definition the square root of negative one, so that's negative times a negative, uh, a negative one times the square root of negative one. So it's that, and uh, the square root of negative one, of course, is i. So we can write that as negative i as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just quickly take a look at i to the fourth. So if we wanted to figure out what's i to the fourth, well, we can use our knowledge of what i uh, squared is, right? i squared is equal to negative one. So i to the fourth, we can write as i squared times i squared, right? Because same base, I could just add the exponents. So two plus two is four. So negative one times negative one is a positive one. Okay, so uh, what we're doing here is looking at patterns. How do we find powers of i by using uh, or previous powers of i? Okay, so i to the fourth, we used i squared. This is kind of the name of the game, but we also need to know something about powers and exponents, okay? And this is stuff certainly you should have had lear uh, learned uh, way back in your algebra one days. Again, if you're at the college algebra level and you want to get your CLEP credits for this, this is stuff you need to know. But let's go ahead and see how we can easily write i to the 30th power and solve this. Okay, so we can write i to the 30th okay, power this way, there's all different ways we can write it, but I'm gonna choose to write it this way. i squared to the 15th power. Remember, if I have something like x to the second power to the seventh, okay, that's equal to, if I have a power to a power, that's equal to x to the 14th, okay? Now, there's all different ways I can write this. I can write i to the 30th power this way, i to the fifth to the sixth, okay? It's because uh, when I multiply five times six, I'm gonna get 30, or two times 15, I'm gonna get 30. Now I'm doing this specifically because I know what i squared is equal to, right? Remember, i squared is equal to negative one. We already answered that question right there. So really, i squared to the 15th power is uh, same as the question, what's negative one to the 15th power? All right, so really this is what uh, we need to answer in order to figure out what i to the 30th power is. So let's take a look at, again, at some patterns, right? What's negative one squared, okay? So negative one squared is negative one times negative one, which is, a po which is a positive one. All right, what's negative one cubed? Well, it's negative one times negative one times negative one. That's gonna be a negative one. Now notice here, when I was taking negative one to an even power, my answer was positive. When I take negative one to an odd power, like three, my answer is negative one. Well, you can continue on here. You can look at uh, negative one to the fourth power, and you're gonna see this pattern repeat, okay? When we have even powers of negative one, we get positive one. We have odd powers of negative one, we get a negative one. So once you're convinced of that, I can look at this uh, question here. I'm going, oh, I got negative one to an odd power. I don't need to write out all these negative ones. I just know that negative one to an odd power is in fact going to be negative one. And there you go. Okay, so again, this is a problem that you should be able to handle, okay, if you're going to be fully prepared uh, for the CLEP College Algebra exam. And that's the whole idea is to be fully prepared. You don't want to go in and schedule this exam and really try to go for it, you know, try to save yourself, uh, you know, time and money. This is a worthwhile endeavor, okay? Uh, if you think you could do it or if you're motivated to learn this material, it's definitely worth it, okay? Because you're going to be saving yourself a good semester and, you know, thousands of dollars, you know, in, in terms of tuition if you can pass this, uh, this exam, okay? So if you need help, if you really want to uh, be fully prepared, I'm gonna definitely suggest that you check out my CLEP College Algebra Test Prep course. Again, I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on your CLEP College Algebra exam and in your college uh, endeavors. And with that being said, have a great day.